Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. This is episode number five in my Luminar 4 tutorial series, helping you get started to jump in, dive in, and start having fun editing in Luminar 4, which is new from our friends at Skyloom Software. And in this video, I'll be talking about, this will be the first of uh, four, almost a mini series within the series, uh, talking about the four different uh, filter tabs or what are not now called tools tabs and these are basically the filters or tools or sliders whatever you want to call them that allow you to make uh, editing adjustments to your photos so without further ado let's hop into it here we go I am in this image and I've got a raw file here and as you can see I'm in essentials so I'm in the editing tab which is right here and I'm in essentials which is this first uh, icon in the right hand side there's four of these essentials creative portrait and professional. I'm going to stay in essentials for this video and walk through each of these filters. To be clear, I'm not going to go a deep dive into everything about every one of these filters simply because some of these deserve a video all of their own, but I do want to cover them at a high level to give you an idea of how to use them and some tips and tricks and ideas and that sort of thing. So let's go. The first one is known as light and light um, is effectively a replacement for what was known as develop or raw develop in the previous versions of Luminar. Uh, you have a number of things here. You have white balance, and again, this is one that would probably deserve its own video. Uh, you have temperature and tint, which allow you to make adjustments to uh, the overall color look to the photo. So in this case, I might warm that up a little bit because it's a lovely sunset, and I might want to give it a little bit of that purple love. Uh, on the tent slider because I just like it. Uh, it is a little bit dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and brighten that with the exposure filter. Smart contrast, I did a video just about this slider. You might wanna check that out there, but it is, a name as the name implies, helps you uh, add some contrast that's intelligent. Um, highlights, I'll probably take down and shadows bring up a little bit. And already, I've got a much uh, better looking image. There's the before and there's the current state. And that's how powerful light is. It is kind of the, the one filter to rule them all, if you will, and allows you a lot of uh, powerful editing capabilities just right here. Um, when you open light, it'll have this advanced settings box at the bottom. If you clip, click it, you can get down into a few more interesting things. Uh, the first one is uh, camera profiles. So this basically allows you to choose different profiles. And basically that just tells the image how to render, especially around color. So each of these is gonna make the photo look slightly different as I go through them. You can kind of tell. Now that is based on the adjustments I've already made. So uh, it's, it's taking those into consideration. In other words, I'm gonna leave it at Luminar default. You have whites, blacks, and you have a tone curve. Tone curve is incredibly powerful. I've done old videos about it. I may come back and do a new one, but uh, suffice it to say that tone curve is, is very possibly, uh, possibly something that you want to learn a lot about. So, you know, having just used light, I went from there to there, which I think is a massive improvement. I'm gonna hit reset, and I'm gonna go down to the next one, which is AI Enhance. This is really easy. AI Accent is like the easy button. It's one slider that's probably um, arguably the most powerful and useful in Luminar. It's an incredible slider, I absolutely love it. It does a lot. Um, I did a really old video years ago when the first version came out, and effectively I found out that it does things like around um, contrast and clarity and color, things like that. So it does a lot to the photo, and if you're just getting started with Luminar, you're gonna love that. It's just so awesome. Uh, that's accent, AI accent, I should say, um, and AI sky enhancer. As you can see, it does kind of a bit of a polarization to the sky. Depending on the image, it can come in handy. I would not use it here, although I definitely would use AI Accent. Next up is AI Structure, and this is an intelligent filter that basically uh, allows you to add some level of detail to the photo, but it is AI-based, so it has a bit of intelligence going into it. Also has a boost slider that allows you to amp that up. The intelligence, basically, it helps detect things like sky. So you can see it got crunchier in the foreground than it did in the sky. It did pick up some stuff in the sky. You can see that before and after. But it's not quite as drastic as what was picked up in the foreground. And in my opinion, that is what is AI about it. It's not going to just um, equally crunch up the detail or the clarity or the crunching, whatever you want to however you want to define it or whatever terms you want to use. It, structure does that, but AI structure does it intelligently, so it generally shows up 
in the areas where you want it to show up and not in the areas you don't want it to show up. Here's a tip, I also sometimes go to the left like that and it does a great job of softening um, up details. So in this case, I would come back and use this edit mask function and probably grab a gradient mask and just drop that right there and something like that and say done. And all I did is drop that gradient mask um, with the reduced structure into the sky to soften it up. So the bottom is untouched and the top, there's before and there's the after, just softer sky. That's how you can use masking and you can use that on any filter except light on the base layer. Uh, I'm gonna reset this one and then we'll go back into the next filter. Okay, next up is color and that's fairly straightforward. You have saturation and vibrance both of which I'm a huge fan of. I just like color, so I like to do that. The difference is for me is that saturation basically increases the intensity or the saturation of all the colors. Vibrance, in, in my view, let me show you, it, it tends to focus more on some of the less prominent colors. Um, not exclusively, but it does a good job of helping you to get a little bit of a nice color kick to an image without oversaturating. And so I will often use vibrance a bit more than I will saturation. Advanced settings is basically what was known as HSL, short for, you guessed it, hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, you can come down here and make adjustments. Effectively, you choose each of these color channels. This blue one, you might wanna increase saturation. Actually, you probably wouldn't on this image, but um, I'm gonna increase the saturation to 100 just to be crazy. Um, and that's the saturation of just the blue. Everything else stayed the same. Uh, in reality, probably what I would do is take the orange and increase the saturation a little bit and maybe take the yellow. I don't know if I'll get much out of that. There's not a ton of yellow, there's a lot of orange. Um, you might come into blue and say, I like it, but it's a little too dark. Okay, well, I'm gonna increase the luminance of the blue and you can see how the sky is getting a little bit lighter because it's predominantly blue. And so I went, uh, I'm just gonna go all the way to 100 and I lift the luminance of the blue. Uh, so that's how you can use these interchangeably or you know use each of these different color channels, which is represented by a dot here, and how you can uh, impact an image. Um, you might, uh, like I said, do them in um, different, um, uh, you know, you might do different settings on each within the same photo. But, you know, I went from that to that, just playing around with color a little bit there in the HSL section. I'm gonna hit reset, close advanced settings, and go to black and white conversion. As the name implies, it allows you to convert to black and white. The thing I like about this that's different than Luminar 3 and previous versions is there actually is a button that says convert to black and white. Previous versions, as soon as you open the filter, it made it black and white. But now, you can do other things first if you want to, and then convert to black and white. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert to black and white just to show how it works. Um, you have two tabs, luminance and saturation. And as you can see here, you have the different colors that are the, kind of the basic colors in an image. If you recall, there's a lot of blue in the sky, right? Let me unconvert that. See the sky, lots of blue, back to black and white. In the luminance of the blue, I can go like this, and I am brightening the sky because I'm increasing the luminance of the blue. Conversely, if I go this way, I'm gonna darken the blue and make it a bit more moody because I've reduced the luminance of the blue. So that's where these, you can double click to go back to zero by the way, that's where these different color channels come into play. The same thing on saturation, you could actually take this blue and add back a little bit of blue saturation and get a little bit of a two-toned image, kind of a, a black and white with a little bit of blue or, you know what, let's take the blue down, let's try the yellow and the red and yeah, you're gonna get a little bit of color. And if you wanted to, you could erase it from the bridge and then just have that color in the sky and maybe add back a little bit of blue and have a semi-colored sky and a black and white foreground or something. The, the options here are fairly limitless, uh, but that's how black and white conversion works. And of course, there's a masking option here as there are on uh, the majority of the filters except for light. If you didn't notice, you cannot mask that on the base layer. Next up is Details Enhancer, and as you can see, small, medium, large details, sharpening, and then in the drop-down menu here under Advanced Settings, you have a lot of other stuff. This requires a different video as well, but let me just show you small details. You can see, I'll just zoom in. You can just see what's happening here. This is getting really crunchy when I bring up the small details, but you know we're also getting some noise in the sky. Let me reset that, 
and I'll show you medium details, right? That's gonna help with the bridge, not quite as bad on the sky in terms of noise, but I'm picking up a little bit, and then large details, I'll jack that up a little bit. Again, showing up some on the bridge, not nearly as much in the sky, and then of course, a sharpen. Those are your primary kind of above this advanced settings fold uh, kind of thing, and sharpen will give you a nice uh, sharp output as well. Um, and that's one of the things, the advanced settings tab exists on a lot of filters, not on every filter, but it basically above the fold, if you will, um, that's the basic stuff you're gonna wanna do um, in that tool on, on any specific image that you open that tool for. Advanced settings are where you wanna get into a little bit more finer control, maybe get into the masking and that sort of thing. So lots of flexibility. Um, while we're zoomed in, I'm on denoise. You have both luminosity and color denoise. Luminosity referring to light and color, of course, referring to color. And I, I just recommend experimenting with these. What uh, denoise does, it basically smooths out detail. So if you look at the before, if you look at the sky and the bridge, they both got a little bit softer. And if I add in color denoise uh, de as well, you're gonna see that they, they I'm just gonna go all the way to 100 just to show you. There's 98, 100, here we go, and 100. Uh, and in the advanced settings tab, below the fold, you have boost. I'm not gonna get into that. But if you look here, uh, if you look at the sky, that's the um, after, here's the before. It's a little bit, I mean, there's a tiny bit of noise, but really, I don't think you would notice. And after, it's a bit smoother. Let me zoom in even further, because look at the tree here. And this is what I wanna point out about denoise. The tree has become very blurry and soft. There it is before, and there it is after. So I recommend that you're very specific and targeted with your denoise, and specifically, um, I would go into masking. And in this case, I would not denoise the foreground. I would just do any denoise in the sky and then use a um, gradient mask to just drop it in, as I showed you on that previous uh, tool. And that would be a quick way to, uh, to denoise the sky. Okay, next up is Landscape Enhancer, and you've got a few uh, little sliders in here. The first one is Dehaze, and as the name implies, it's designed to remove atmospheric haze and cut down on glare. So what it, I find that it generally does is add some contrast and some punchy color impact to the photo, as you can see here. So I also recommend being careful. This is not particularly a hazy image. You will, you'll know when you have it, like a really foggy image, if you want to cut through some of that haze, that's a good one for it. Golden Hour adds a nice, soft, warm glow to the photo. You can see what that's doing here. And again, in each case, I'm going pretty high in value. I don't recommend that you do that unless you're just specifically going for that look. I'm doing it just to show you uh, a, a more visible impact on the photo in terms of how that slider works. But Golden Hour is one of my favorites. I've been using it since... I don't know what version it was in, maybe the first one, but it's a wonderful filter. And Foliage Enhancer can help you bump up some of the color intensity and that sort of thing around trees and grass. Um, I use it often in combination with Foliage Hue, uh, Hue and also HSL from the color to basically take the greens and turn them a bit more yellow e orange to make kind of a fall look from kind of a green foliage type photo. Otherwise, I don't really use Foliage Enhancer a lot, but on the right image, this is not the right image, but on the right image, it can help you really pop the colors and foliage and make for a nice look. And last but not least, we have vignette. And you do have the ability to choose a subject, which means where do you want the center of the vignette to be? So choose subject, I'll just say right there on the bridge, just one click and the photo will tell it. Uh, and then you can de uh, go left to increase the amount of the vignette. Uh, I know it seems kind of backwards and size, means it's gonna be smaller by going left. But below the fold, again, uh, if you click on advanced settings, you have this drop down. You have the roundness, the feathering, and inner light. I love inner light. Inner light basically pops the center of whatever you call this subject, and it pops that and makes it brighter. So I every time I use a vignette, honestly, I use inner light because it's that powerful. Um, another idea is uh, just to come in here and just take the roundness, um, all the way and the feathering like that. And that's gonna show you where your vignette is before you actually get into the vignette. And then you can kind of do these kind of things uh, to see how heavy of a vignette do I want? What size do I want? Um, and then you can kind of pull back the feathering to soften it up and pull back the roundness to give it a better shape uh, and then increase inner light. Again, that's a little too heavy. 
So I'm gonna go like that with feathering. The more to the right, the softer that edge is. And that really covers the vignette tool, and I'm gonna hit reset, and honestly, that covers all of these different tools within the Essentials tab. So that's a high level overview. Like I said, a couple of three of these probably need a video specific to them where I can get into a little bit more detail because otherwise we'll be here too long. And I'm just trying to give you a good overview of how these work and how to use them and some tips and tricks along the way. I do hope it's helpful. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like, share, comment, let me know your thoughts. And I'll be back soon. That was episode five in my Luminar 4 tutorial series. I'll be back really soon with episode six, in which case I'm gonna jump into the next tab, which is creative. So look for that real soon. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you later. Take care and adios.